Hello, I'm John Bailey, and I'm here as uh, part of the editorial board of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. We have the pleasure at our national meetings of interviewing the authors of some of our best papers. And today I have uh, Dr. Amandeep Shergill, who's an associate professor of medicine at the VA hospital in San Francisco, which is affiliated with UCSF. And she's the first author of a paper, I'm going to read this because I always mess up titles, which is Protective Association of Colonoscopy Against Proximal and Distal Colon Cancer and Patterns in Interval Cancer. And I know this is going to be a good paper because it's got some big hitter authors on it, Ken McQuaid, John Inadomi and others. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I apologize if I jump in here. We have a limited amount of time, but uh, I may ask you to clarify odds and ends. But just tell us, what was your thought process going into the Why did you want to look at this subject? Uh, so the reason we wanted to do the study is we've had a screening colonoscopy program in place since 1998. Uh, so our site was one of the sites involved in the original um, VA cooperative study. And Ken McQuaid, who's our chief of gastroenterology, is very forward thinking and saw the um, benefits of screening colonoscopy very early on. And so we wanted to um, study the effectiveness of colonoscopy in an open access screening program. Good. And I, I'm guessing that as this was done in a VA system, it's almost all men, is that correct? Um, we initially did have some cases who were women, but we could not find sufficient controls because there are not enough women, it's particularly in our VA. So yes, 100% of our cases that were included were men. So why don't you tell us just simply how you set up this study and then we'll talk about the results. So we set up the study as a nested case control study with incident density sampling and um, well, what I'll that means... I'll just stop you there and have you tell me what that <laughs> is because that, that's beyond me. Uh, so uh, basically we were p from the cases when we were matching for controls, um, we were matching out of the general population and so control could become a case later on. Um, and our cases were uh, veterans who were over the age of 50 who had been diagnosed with the colon cancer and the, sort of a key part of our case definition was they had to have um, been diagnosed with a colon cancer after at least six months of their first primary care visit. And the reason for that is that we wanted to make sure we were weeding out a lot of the patients that had been referred over just for treatment for their colon cancers or came in with symptoms um, that were diagnostic of their colon cancer. And those patients were then matched with controls by age, sex, and time with their primary care provider. So we didn't want to bias one group or the other for having a short versus a longer time. So they were matched for time with their primary care provider as well. Good. So in as condensed a form as you can, tell us what the results were. Well, we um, found that colonoscopies overall um, appeared to have a protective effect against the development of colon cancer. So of our cases, 20% had previously been exposed to colonoscopy, and of our controls, 49% had been previously exposed to colonoscopy. Overall, um, the adjusted odds ratio uh, after having been exposed to colonoscopy of developing colon cancer, or the odds of being associated with colon cancer, was 0.2 overall. Um, and it was a strong association both for distal colon cancers with an adjusted odds ratio of 0 0.16, as well as for proximal colon cancers with an adjusted odds ratio of 0 0.26. So it used to be said that screening was more effective for left-sided lesions than for right-sided. In fact, I think I'm correct in saying there was at least one study said that right-sided lesions were largely unaffected by screening. So this is a different finding. Why do you think that is? is this, you just did it better, or why? Uh, well, uh, Ken's applied a very high standard to our endoscopy unit, and so um, he has been um, really making us, pushing us to meet all of the required quality metrics. And so when we looked at the quality of our colonoscopy, we overall are performing high-quality colonoscopy. So our adenoma detection rates were um, 45% overall and 41% in our screening population. We had high cecal intubation rates as well as actually um, good, at least adequate to fair bowel prep quality, which is quite a feat sometimes in our veteran population. Um, but what was interesting is that despite sort of meeting all of these quality metrics, when we looked at our interval cancers, which we defined as cancers in patients that had been previously exposed to a colonoscopy where that cancer showed up within their surveillance interval, but also within five years of that index examination, we found that 10% of our cases met the definition of an interval cancer. And that number was uh, higher than we expected it to be. Well, it sounds like Dr. McQuaid had you doing it right. So do you have a take home message for us? Yeah, you know, what was interesting when we looked at our interval cancers is that um, about a third of our lesions were incomplete polypectomies. And those incomplete polypectomies tended to cluster in the hepatic flexure, areas where we had done piecemeal resections of mostly serrated lesions. And our missed lesions clustered in the cecum and in the rectum, areas that we know harbor blind spots that are difficult for us to, to assess. And so despite 
performing you know, high quality examinations, we had a fairly high incidence of both missed lesions as well as incomplete um, polypectomies. And so it brought, to the question, it brought to our mind whether or not we should be considering other quality measures in terms of determining what is a quality colonoscopy, so more a technical measure of performance as in how, I how are the detected um, lesions being resected and what is an incomplete resection rate for an endoscopist. And that might be sort of the next level of quality we need to look at to really minimize the risk of interval cancers moving forward. Well, it sounds like you've got some material for another We're two or three so. studies. So <laughs> Dr. Shergo, thank you so much. Thank you.